cultural gem just west of Rochester is the Genesee Country Village and Museum. We're delighted to have Becky Whaley, the president and CEO, with us today here in the Spotlight. Welcome here. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. What an exciting place to be. It is. There's a lot going on. <laughs> and there's a family connection for you with GC. Yes, there is. My grandfather, Jack Whaley, founded the museum um, back in 1966, so even before I was born, um, and was uh, very involved in it until he passed away in 1993, and then um, I've been on the board since shortly thereafter, and then took over uh, two years ago as president and CEO. Oh, I see. Yeah. And if people want to learn more while they're watching, what is the website? It's www.gcv, like Genesee Country Village, org. I see. And so you mentioned the museum, first of all. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing. But the whole thing is a museum, is that right? It is, yes. So um, we call it a, a museum with three parts. So we have our historic village, our gallery, and our nature center. So. I see. Mm -hmm. And what's in the gallery that people would find interesting? Um, well, the gallery is has two strong collections in it. So there's a collection of wildlife and sporting art um, that is in there. Much of it is what my grandfather collected, but then we've also um, refined some of it as well. So it's paintings, sculptures, drawings of um, animals, um, and other sort of sporting related activities um, that are span about four centuries. Oh, right. And um, we have about 750 pieces oh, in right. that collection. And then we also have a wonderful clothing collection, mostly 19th century, um, of about 3,500 pieces oh, right. that, uh, yep, men's clothing, women's clothing, children, shoes, you know, the whole nine yards. So it's really fascinating to, to look at that as well. And so Jack was a collector. He was, yes. Right. He Did was. he have good taste? Um, I think so. <laughs> he, you know, it really is considered to be a, a wonderful collection of sporting art um, and that, you know, a lot of great artists, um, and great pieces. Yeah, so. nationally we're renowned in mm -hmm. fact. That's mm -hmm. great. And that's the green collection of, of clothing. Is exactly. That right? So that actually was all collected by one woman, um, who is Susan Green, who um, still is alive and lives down um, in Alfred Station. And she um, was passionate about clothing and collected these pieces over many years and then um, sold them to us about six or seven years ago, and oh. so they're on display. And so the gallery has rotating exhibits. So oh, we have um, generally one exhibit of, um, of sporting art and then one on clothing as well. So you can see um, all of the, the collections when you come to visit. Well, fabric isn't easy to preserve. You must have special facilities there. Not. We do. We, have, um, we renovated the gallery oh. right before we got that collection. And so, yes, we have storage areas, all climate controlled, um, very carefully, um, you know, they some of them hang. We have the hats on special mounts. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's a lot of work to, wow. to keep it all together. But it's, um, it's such a comprehensive collection and, and not only interesting for visitors to look at, but provides a basis for us to be able to uh, look at what our interpreters are wearing for clothing as well. And so to say, oh, okay, so this is something that they would have worn. Um, how can we reproduce that to actually have um, the interpreters wear it in the village? I see. Well, you know, uh, Alfred Station is, this is kind of Quaker country. Is there mm -hmm. a Quaker culture um, represented there in that collection? Probably. Um, I don't know specifically, yeah. but it's a, it's a fairly comprehensive collection. So, uh -huh. Lace um, and all that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. All kinds of, um, and, and different, you know, from fairly simple dre cotton dresses um, that they might have worn mm -hmm. on a regular day to all the way up to wedding dresses, um, which look a lot different than we would expect them to now. Uh -huh. but, um, so it's a resource for scholars as well as day visitors. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. And even just, you know, as you say, the sort of general public to come in because everybody wears clothes. Yeah. So you can appreciate, like, wow, that must have been, especially the, the sizing is fascinating. I mean, yeah. they were, you know, smaller and, um, you know, the corsets and all that pushed women's waists yeah. um, to be smaller and narrower. So Certainly the Sporting Life uh, exhibit is fantastic. I've seen that myself. It is, yes. And so. then uh, about artworks on the walls, do you accept works from outside that travel to the exhibit? We don't generally have too many outside works. Occasionally we'll, we'll mix a few in. So for 
2018 and 2019, we have an exhibit called Working Like a Dog uh -huh. uh, that's featuring all sorts of different um, dog-related art. Uh -huh. And so we do have some outside artists who are part of that. So we try to work occasionally a few 21st century um, pieces in just to, to kind of tie them together with um, with today. So we do have that. That's that wonderful. Piece. Sounds like a wonderful gallery. It is. And then the Living History Museum and then the Nature Center. Really, yes. there's three aspects of it. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the Living History uh, portion of it. So our historic village is 68 buildings, all of which were moved there. Um, and from about uh, about 80 miles is probably about the farthest distance. But basically, you know, a complete circle around Rochester. Um, they came from various areas um, and everything from... Um, so the, the time frame is... Um, roughly early 1800s through about 1880. And um, so we have houses that cover all that time span. And so that makes us different than a place like Sturbridge or Williamsburg, which are sort of one um, fairly narrow time period. Right. So you can see everything from our um, pioneer farmsteads or one room cabin up through our Hamilton house, which is um, a probably 5,000 square foot Victorian home. So you get the whole span of that time. Oh, well, so that people can plan a visit if they're traveling to this. It's the largest living history museum in uh, the state, I believe. It, yes, it is. And that's by number of buildings. Uh -huh. um, so yes, at 68, we're the largest in New York State and right. the third largest in the country after mm -hmm. uh, Colonial Williamsburg and Henry Ford Greenfield Village outside of Detroit. I think people would be surprised to learn that, or, mm -hmm. or local treasure. Mm -hmm. And so if you're planning your visit, what kind of activities can you experience during the day? Um, so every day we have um, two kitchens that are working. So we have cooks in there who are demonstrating. Um, depends on the time of year. They may, um, you know, they're cooking with what's fresh and what's available to them, but doing all sorts of different things. Um, sometimes making cheese, sometimes um, making a regular meal. Uh, we have a variety of crafts people who work uh -huh. every day too. So we have a blacksmith, a potter, a tinsmith, a uh, cooper uh -huh. who are there and showing you what they do. And, um, and then in costumed interpreters, so um, people who are well-trained, very knowledgeable um, in about 22 of the buildings as well. So you can go house to house, building to building, and, uh, and learn a little bit from each of them. And I like to say too that if you come on a regular day and then you come back a different day, there's likely to be a different interpreter in there. So you may learn something completely different because they all have um, kind of their own ways of uh -huh. telling stories or yeah. their own knowledge. Their so. own perspective. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so is it open during the week or this principally weekends? Or uh, We're open um, roughly between uh, Mother's Day and Labor Day. We're open Tuesday until Sunday. Oh. And then um, Labor Day till mid October, we're open um, Wednesday through Sunday. Wednesday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. But yes, all of the dates are on our website um, and the hours as well. And are there special events on the weekends? And tell us about what we might experience. Yes, so we have special events um, all year long. Okay. And so those are a great opportunity. So you can come during the, um, on a non-special event day and really kind of dig into the buildings and the stories, but you can also come on a special event day um, and learn about all different things. So we start um, early in the year. So while we're, we're open, the village is open from May to October, we do do events. Um, before that, we have a big Maple Sugar Festival oh, yeah. in March. Mm -hmm. um, that's at our nature center, but also into the village because maple sugaring was important mm -hmm. for uh, for the 19th century um, inhabitants. And then um, we go through in May, we have opening and Mother's Day celebration. We have a 5K race. Uh, June, we have a Celtic fair and an 1812 um, reenactment. July, we have 4th of July Civil War. August, we have a Fiddler's Fair. Mm -hmm. So there's just, there are all kinds of things. September and October, we have a lot of harvest and fall events. Um, we do a Halloween uh, guided tour, and then our um, one thing that we're fairly well known for is we do a um, Christmas guided tour oh. as well. So the first three weekends in December, um, you can come and take a guided tour through the village that tells you all about what, uh, what Christmas was like at various points in time. 
um, in the 19th century. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, so you can really experience it all year long. That you can, yep. So do you sell a membership to this? or We do, yes. Uh -huh. We have um, a variety of memberships that uh -huh. um, get everything from an individual through um, a family or a set of grandparents in, and it's a great value. It's, um, it basically gets you free admission to regular museum uh, programs for a whole entire year. So oh. if you come come just twice, generally, you are... Uh, <laughs> you are taking full advantage of it and getting your money's worth, but then all kinds of other discounts and such benefits as well. How about special interests if you're a gardener, for instance? We do have wonderful gardens mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, we uh, you know, are fairly weather dependent, so depending on how, uh, how the rain and the sun has been, um, and also we are fairly deer dependent. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a lot of uh, nibblers out there <laughs> yeah. who, who can uh, tackle the gardens. but. Mm -hmm. Um, so all different kinds of gardens as well, from sort of um, more primitive vegetable gardens um, up through some of our Victorian gardens. Um, we do weddings in them as well. We do garden tours. Um, so yes, we have um, several staff members who that's what they do is just take care of the gardens. Gardens. Uh -huh. um, throughout the village. Lots of medicinal herbs and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of nibblers, are there is there livestock or animals? There are. <laughs> yep. So we have um, we have quite an array of um, livestock that's supposed to be there as opposed to the deer. Uh, so we have everything. We have um, quite a selection of birds, so geese and ducks. Um, we usually have two pigs who live with us for the season. We have um, hog island sheep who are uh, a heritage breed, so they're. Um, you know, fairly rare, and so we're um, taking care of them and breeding them. Oh and then um, as of uh, last year, we have two sets of oxen. So we have an older set who are, uh, I think, just turning seven, uh -huh. and uh, their names are Buck and Dan, and you'll <laughs> frequently see them out and about. They plow, um, they haul things, so they're, they're doing what they would have been doing back in the 19th century. And then we have another set who are just over a year old uh, named Star and Bright, and they're growing. Uh, so they will, uh, <laughs> once they get to be um, full size, then Buck and Dan will be ready to retire and Star and Bright can take over and, uh, and be the oxen. But So there are, yes, all kinds of animals to see as well. So in the, this time period, uh, you know, there would have been in a village, a church, and a school. Are these all represented in the property? Mm-hmm. So we have, um, as I mentioned, sort of the range of houses. Mm -hmm. But then um, we also have um, a one-room schoolhouse, a female seminary, um, all of the trades that I mentioned, um, an inn. Um, that came from Caledonia oh. that actually is um, in 2018 is 200 years old. Oh my. So it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting story there. Um, we have two churches, um, again, that are available for weddings, but also just um, for a variety of other um, visits and um, a couple stores. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sort of the full the full range of village life. I think the interesting part is even though all the buildings were moved there, they really fit together and they look like particularly the center village area really looks like what a village might have looked like. Like people are um, really surprised oh. to hear that it's um, it didn't all grow up like that. It was it was all moved there. The whole lifestyle is represented. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yep. The whole whole range of uh, of activities. Mm -hmm. Now, are the crafts people producing things that you can buy? For instance, in your shop or yes, mm -hmm. um, some of them are. So our our potter is for sure. Uh -huh. um, our tinsmith is to some extent. Uh -huh. um, you know, they they their primary job is to interpret. Yes. And so they uh, they fit in producing things around having visitors and sharing information with them. But yes, there are definitely um, a variety of pieces that you can um, purchase, both in our shop and um, online as well. Oh, really? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, how about foodstuffs? Are the <laughs> we, we do have those. So several years ago, we opened um, a 19th century confectionery. Okay. And so <laughs> that's right, um, right on the village square. Mm -hmm. And it um, so it sells all kinds of different treats, um, primarily on the weekends, um, Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays. Um, so all made with um, 19th century recipes. So some great um, shortbread, um, macaroons with chocolate on them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, yeah, varying uh, seasonal uh, fruit related um, hand pies as well. So nice. yeah, lots of neat things. Uh -huh. Anything to drink? 
Um, in there, I don't think, no, there's nothing um, historic beyond um, water. Oh, okay. but, but we do have um, also a 19th century brewery. Yeah, that's where I was headed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you could wash your hand pie down with a beer if you wanted. <laughs> um, so, so we have actually the only 19th century brewery, uh, working brewery in the country that we know of. Um, and so you wouldn't want to drink the beer that we make. Um, <laughs> yeah. we, we, because it's all open vats oh and my. yes, but, um, but that's the, the best way to demonstrate what it would have been like in the 19th century to brew beer. And so, but then we have two um, recipes that are made for us and so that you can buy uh -huh. um, in our restaurants oh, awesome. as well. So, and where do you find the hops for these? Uh, they, it actually gets made um, for us, so I think they outsource the hops from oh. somewhere. But we do we grow some hops, but we don't um, we don't grow enough to make the beer that um, uh, that we use. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of hops to uh, uh -huh. to grow. Oh, I see. You have to grow a lot to be able to. I remember seeing some growing out there. That's yep, yep. They grow up the pole. So it's a you know an, another thing that kind of. What we try to do is connect life today yeah. to life back then. So, you know, everybody's familiar with beer. So how did that get made? What was involved in it? Um, and so you really, you see those things um, when you come to visit us in a way that you wouldn't necessarily understand if you hadn't, uh, hadn't you know, had that chance to experience it in person. It seems like something that people could get involved in and wish to experience more fully and spend some time there. Is that possible as well? Absolutely. Yep. So we have um, multiple day passes. Um, as you said, the membership. We also have opportunities where um, people can spend the night. Nice. So in our Pioneer cabin, you can uh, come with your family and spend a weekend and you get a costume and you do all the chores. You have an interpreter who works with you and uh, helps you to understand really what it would have been like. You sleep in the cabin. Um, and that's an interesting one. Uh -huh. It takes a certain kind of person to, to want to do that. <laughs> uh, but people who do it and who are into it love it because it's a really immersive experience. But then we also have um, day-long experiences as well where you can work with our cooper, oh. with our blacksmith, you can cook. Um, so same sort of thing. You get a costume, you come in, you're paired with... Uh -huh. Um, with an interpreter for the entire day, and you learn how to do whatever their craft is. So, All right, um, be a blacksmith or mm -hmm, build mm -hmm. the barrels of the casks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cook over an open fire. Mm -hmm. oh. Very carefully, not lighting <laughs> yourself on fire, but yes. Yep. It sounds like a great place that a, a kid might like to enjoy in the summertime. It is, yes. We have camps um, uh -huh. as well that they can do. That We do take kids in the, um, in the Pioneer overnight. Oh, really? Uh -huh. um, we do have families who, wanted, oh, who do wow. it, but yes, um, we do have a variety of different camps over the summer um, from right after 4th of July through um, mid-August, and they, um, we have two different kinds. So we have um, summer sampler camp where you're in the village doing various things, everything from cooking classes to uh, we have a school of the soldier camp where you pretend to be a Civil War soldier. Oh. And then we also have um, other camps in our nature center, um, earth camp where you can learn about bugs or <laughs> other animals. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, we have about 500 kids who um, are with us at various points throughout right. the summer. Oh, right. Uh, and that's not a school visit. Those are no. They're enroll. coming, so they're here for day camp. Uh, day camp. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, they would good. enroll on your site. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. All the information on that um, is on the website as well. Oh, that's marvelous. And so, uh, suppose I you mentioned a wedding before. Suppose mm -hmm. I, I had that in my plans. What? How would it work at Genesee Country Village? So we have weddings in all different configurations. We usually have between 30 and 40 a year. Oh my. Uh, sometimes we'll just have the ceremony and they'll have a reception somewhere else. Sometimes we'll just have the reception. Uh -huh. um, so we have two um, wonderful large barns where we do receptions. We can mm -hmm. accommodate up to about 250 people. Oh my. Um, and sometimes we have both the ceremony and the reception with us. So they'll have the ceremony in the church or a lot more being outside now. Mm -hmm. um, in one of the gardens and uh, then your guests can wander around while you're having pictures taken oh, and my. you know kind of avoid that awkward break between the the ceremony and the reception oh, um, right. and it's just you know it's a very special place it, it yeah. provides a backdrop that is uh, is unlike any other well is uh, the church uh, consecrated then could you have a, a, a legal wedding there well yes if you uh -huh. brought in your you know your own officiant who was uh -huh. 
um, you know, authorized to be able to do that. So we, yes, everybody brings in their own. We do not, we do not provide anyone to be <laughs> yeah. able to uh, to do that for you. Uh -huh. But because everyone oh, has their astounding. their own preference. Yep. So it's neat. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned the uh, restaurant or the inn. Is mm -hmm. that Hosmer's inn? It is. Yes. So tell me about that. So um, that building, as I said, is about 200 years old. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, built in 1818, and it was a stagecoach in oh. um, in Caledonia. And it was moved to the museum, and now um, it's a wonderful space where um, visitors can come in. And um, it's one of the few buildings where you can go upstairs as well. Oh. And but then also we do um, a variety of other activities in there. So we have um, dinners in there. Um, a few times each fall and spring where you come and you have a 19th century meal. Um, we take groups of all sizes. Really? Mm -hmm. So we, we pick a theme uh -huh. um, for each season and find recipes. And mm -hmm. then um, one of the really neat things about that, so obviously it's in the evening and there's no one else really around. Oh, and wow. so you also, as part of the dinner, you get a tour of the museum and you get to go upstairs also in buildings of your choice. So Excellent. frequently people like to go upstairs in the um, Hyde House, which is our octagon house. Oh, yeah. And so it's got a great view of the village. You don't get to do that um, as a normal visitor. So that's a fun part of that. We do afternoon teas in there. Um, that are tea. scheduled okay. as well mm -hmm. um, and uh, frequently our camps are working out of there they're working out of the basement kitchen oh. um, and cooking all sorts of things that sounds like a good thing to do if you have a corporate event or a party a private party huh? yes yeah so you're right even in addition to the weddings that we do we can do all kinds of corporate events we have picnics that frequently happen uh -huh. Or we can do team building activities as well, teaching people how to cook, mm -hmm. um, and then they can have a meal together. That's exciting. Yeah, lots of options. And if I had presentations and people to be in a seminar or something like that, do you mm -hmm. have facilities for that as well? We do also have a, a modern um, banquet center. Uh -huh. And so, yes, so indoors, um, air conditioning, heat. And so that's available year round. Oh. Um, yep, we have, we have a big um, 300 person uh, picnic that's happening in there this weekend. My, my. So weddings and corporate events are equally welcome. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's exciting. So you mentioned that octagon house. I think there must be some uh, historical connection to these. Any prominent individuals who lived in those houses that we would recognize today, for instance? Um, uh, George Eastman, for instance. Or, <laughs> George Eastman yeah. um, lived in the house that's right next door to the um, octagon house. So oh. his boyhood home um, is at the museum. It was where he grew up um, until I think he was about seven and moved to Rochester. So that has an interesting story that it um, it moved from its original location um, and it was at the grounds of the Eastman Museum for many years and then I think in the late 70s when they did their expansion it moved to the museum. Um, we have uh, Nathaniel Rochester's one of his um, early homes as well, right when he moved to the Rochester area. Oh my, that's, yeah, that's so, great. Yeah, those are two, I would say, famous, famous claims to fame. Yeah, uh -huh. so uh, you mentioned also the, the period uh, reenactors who come. Uh, you know, sometimes they make an encampment, for instance. Does that happen at the museum as well? They do, yeah. So we do that um, primarily twice a year for our 1812 reenactment in, um, in June. Uh -huh. So they're um, British and American soldiers who are generally here for that. Mm -hmm. And then um, for s the Civil War reenactment in July, we usually have somewhere around 900 reenactors oh who come, um, both Confederate and Union. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, In full regalia and, and reenacting yes, the period. Exactly. So mm -hmm. um, full regalia, generally um, wives come. Um, there are even kids who are a part of it, um, and they all, they sleep outside, oh my. and uh, sometimes we have cavalry as well, so they come um, with their horses, and they, yeah, they pick a battle, um, and they, uh, they do one battle um, each day, oh and my. they are, yeah, I mean, it's very historically accurate, and it's, um, it's really a special experience, because they are um, very, uh, very into it. Uh -huh. um, all the equipment. Yeah. They pretend to die. Um, so <laughs> right. it's. We always hope it's not 95 degrees. And they're not <laughs> yeah. really passing out from the heat <laughs> yeah. in their wool wool uniforms. Mm -hmm. But they have fun. 
Thank so you very uh, much. that's the Living History Museum portion of it. We mentioned the gallery, and then there's yep. the whole nature center and trails. I think. Yep. So we have a, a nature center um, that is, the trails are open um, when the museum is open. So oh. you're welcome to go over and walk around oh. um, at any time the museum is open. But the nature center itself is um, typically only open on Sundays. Um, and they offer um, guided trail um, tours then and some individual um, classes in the Nature Center. That's also uh, where our maple sugar program is based out of. Um, so we have, uh, we demonstrate both 19th century and 21st century maple sugaring techniques. And uh, starting next season, we will um, make our own maple syrup. So we have, we've just built a new sugar house that has, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> how we'll, it is, it's going to take a lot more, a uh, lot more sap than we have right now. Oh, okay. But we, uh, we are confident that, um, next maple sugaring season, we will have enough and we will be, uh, creating our own syrup, awesome. which is, yeah, exciting and really important in New York State. I mean, there's a, yep. you know, 200 years of maple history here um, because we have a, a significant number of maple trees in the state. So mm -hmm. we're excited to be able to to show all that history yeah. and help people to learn. And we also serve pancakes at our, <laughs> at our breakfast, too. So uh, it's tasty as well. <laughs> and how about these nature trails? You can walk them. Are there, are there maps and things that organize trails? Mm -hmm. Yep, oh, okay. I, um, we do. We have um, different trails of varying lengths uh -huh. um, and that show a lot of um, sort of different geological features of the area. Um, and, you know, it's great. You can learn about all different things, but it's also just very nice and peaceful and quiet. Mm -hmm. um, a nice way to to get a little exercise out there during the winter. You can ski and snowshoe. Really? Um, if you have your own equipment, you're welcome to come and do that. Um, oh. Yeah, so those are available um, also in the winter to, for people to get out to as well. And are there after hours activities? I know you close around four on a typical day. We do usually. Um, we do, um, we're trying to do more uh -huh. after hours to be accommodating to people's schedules, knowing uh -huh. that not everybody can come, uh -huh. um, come during the day. But we are, um, we have some upstairs, downstairs tours that happen in evenings. Um, we have some, uh, we have a History on Tap event in June where people can come and, uh, and sample beer and wine. We're starting to do a few more concerts in, um, at the end of events. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do, to do more and to welcome people, um, you know, more than we have been in the past because we realize that schedules can be uh, hard to accommodate a visit, so we're trying to be a little more flexible. And if I wanted lunch while I was there, what would I? Uh, yes. Well, there are a whole variety of options. Um, depending on when you come, we have um, two different restaurants in uh -huh. sort of high season. We have ice cream, uh -huh. um, but then also I would mention, you know, the town of Caledonia um, is about five minutes away. Uh -huh. It's a very cute little town. Lots of restaurants and um, and shops there. Oh, Scottsville is. Not far away, also. Okay. So it's um, you know sometimes people think we're in the middle of nowhere, yeah. but we're not. We're about 25 minutes from downtown, and uh, and there's a lot to do also in the in the neighboring towns. So you can make a day of it if you'd like. And, if people uh, are traveling to Western New York, they could see Rochester and this. And absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. We get a lot of people who have um, been in Corning or Niagara Falls, uh -huh. and uh, and stop by as well. Yeah. We get visitors from throughout the world frequently. Oh. That's exciting. Yeah. So restaurants and living history and nature trails and a gallery. It sounds yeah. like a very complete uh, and wonderful experience. It is. We like it and we hope people will come to visit us. So tell us the website one more time. It's www.gcv.org. Well, thank you so much for being my guest in the spotlight. Thank you. Becky Whaley is the president and CEO of the Genesee Country Village and Museum near Mumford, New York.